everyone, my name is Jenny, and today my speak topic is the collision of educational values between Eastern and Western culture. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. This goal from Martin Luther King mostly reflected what I want to point out about education today. There are two elements in this statement, intelligence and character. So before my speech, I'd like to raise this question first. To what extent does intelligence and character coexist? And does any one of these outweigh the other when we have to make any trade-offs? As a student in Shiva Dua, who is going to study abroad, I've witnessed collisions of educational values between Eastern and Western culture. Many of my friends around me have experienced a huge educational shock after being exposed to the international baccalaureate curriculum. And this huge transformation enabled them to redefine what education really meant. Usually, people would value intelligence to slightly outweigh character, since, since intelligence is a very large part of education, especially in China due to cultural and demographic factors. However, the severe competition among candidates is partly caused by a large pool where people compete based on test scores, which quantifies their intellectual abilities. However, this is not 100% appropriate because in this system, the part of, the part of character develop, development is lost and ways of education will become limited as time goes on. Test scores will gradually become the only standard that people are incentivized to set their goals for. Therefore, personally, I don't think that intelligence should be cultivated in this way. But from a different perspective though, there are values that goes against the conventional ones. For example, in the movie Dead Cool Society, the plot was set in an elite conservative high school in 1959, and it was in New England. At that time, students who were suppressed under this system happened to encounter their new English teacher, Mr. Keating, who later became a key transformer of the conventional values in this school. Mr. Keating completely subverted the conventional values stated in the school model. Traditional, honor, discipline, and excellence. He even encouraged his students to tear off the textbook preface as they formulated poetry appreciation into theories, which he considered to be constraining from his perspective. By breaking dogmatism in this academy, he valued critical and proactive thinking. In his philosophy, that the part of character development should be a foundation of improving intellectual abilities. I think at this point, we can safely conclude that intelligence and character cannot bring about true education in isolation. A combination of the two seems to prevent a convergence towards either of the extremes. For example, just a few years ago, China and Britain made an exchange in educational resources and some people may wonder, why would they do that? At that time, Chinese students took a leading edge in PISA. That is the program for international student assessment, which measures the 15-year-old's ability in reading, mathematics, and science studies. A BBC director saw an opportunity to invite five Chinese teachers to Wuhan School in Britain, teaching 50 British teenage students. And what was the result then? After being exposed, under a Chinese style of teaching, the student participants perform way better than their other peers in exams. And the result became so influential that in 2016, according to The Guardian, the British government incorporated Chinese style of education and invested 41 million pounds bringing in translated Chinese math textbooks as well as for faculty training. This, in this case, the British government was, tr was uh, trying to balance between intelligence and character in its educational philosophy. It chose to strengthen the part of intellectual development based on character, and it cleverly incorporated Chinese style of teaching to complement with its previous weaknesses in the system. I think the educational values between the Eastern and Western culture or how we combine intelligence and character can be debated over and over since there are no exactly right or wrong values in education. As voices appealing for individualism and freedom of choice become louder and louder, people tend to lean towards the part of character development 
And this tendency can be reflected by the fact that Mr. Keating's rape of dogmatism in the movie Dead Poets Society seem to be more acceptable and welcomed by non-conservatives nowadays. However, if different variations could collide and react, the new hybrid could have inherited benefits from both. Some people may have stereotypical recognitions of Chinese style of education to be certain constrained, but if its rigor is incorporated just right to a certain extent, collisions could lead to bad results, just like when the British government incorporated Chinese style of teaching to improve from its previous status. So after talking so much about educational values, some may wonder how does this link to our lives then? And why do they matter? At this point, I would like to bring about a small personal experience when I accidentally came across a small debate on educational values. At that time, I was in an American summer school, and we were asked to write down the greatest obstacles encountered in our lives. I was with a few Chinese students who expressed their barriers when they tried to communicate with their parents. And some expressed their um, some expressed their concerns because their parents didn't really know what they were interested in. And at that time, the American mentor asked us a few questions. And some says, um, they, they really have a very similar experiences with all of you that's in the, um, our audience. Because at that time, when they, were, when they were trying to compel to study what they were not really interested in, they feel like, oh, this is, not, this is not what I'm looking for. But the American mentor says something that encouraged us to think. And some may realize how these hard times have polished them to be better selves over time, and even felt grateful for their parents. Although the educational philosophy followed by the Chinese parents didn't follow Martin Luther King's quote that combines intelligence and character together. In this case, education seems to be a process of cultivating great minds. And during this process, the American mentor opinion on educational values and the Chinese students' values collided. And we seem to gain new insights from this conversation. As I mentioned, the debate of educational values can go on and on forever, and collisions of educational values balancing between intelligence and character can go on and on forever. I think the final discussion on this topic is how we should form our own educational philosophies. I think there are two steps. First, since there are no exact right or wrong values, think of the advantages and disadvantages, and you will have your resolution. Second, when you feel conflicted, talk to someone else, because we tend to gain new insights from the collisions of different perspectives and cultures. I think this should be the fascination of collision. Creativity, debatability, and the complexity. Thank you. <laughs>